The first thing I wanted to discuss is this NHL Black Lives Matter protest. I don't know if anybody saw this on social media, but I guess there was a hockey game today. And whereas in basketball and in football and in baseball, you've got people taking knees and protesting for Black Lives Matter on the field, in this NHL hockey game today, the players, rather than taking a knee, I don't know if this was some kind of sign of racial solidarity for Black Lives Matter, but instead of getting on their knees, they, they simply linked arms while standing on the, the ice rink on their skates. And this caused an outrage because, of course, it's 2020. It's been 60 days since George Floyd died, and you can't not take a knee. You have to take a knee. So this, this display, number one, not only they're not taking knee for Black Lives Matter, but on top of that, we all know that hockey is a white sport. It is virtually all white people, from players to coaches to fans. This simply could not stand. And so in response to this, you had, I don't know how many, but I saw at least hundreds of people posting pictures of themselves in their NHL jerseys on their knees on Twitter and other social media saying things like, if the NHL won't take a knee, then I will. And so Twitter today was just flooded of, with hundreds of pictures of fat and otherwise disgusting sports fans, hockey players, down on their knees, you know, in their cargo shorts and no shoes on and their jerseys and whatever other goofy stuff going on in their living rooms or in their backyards, taking a knee for Black Lives Matter. Um, and it's ridiculous in itself to see all these ridiculous people, you know, in, in their living room with, like, their pajamas on, taking a knee for, like, Black Lives Matter or whatever. But, I mean, we, we all react to that, I think, in basically the same way with disgust and outrage. And it's so stupid. So, you, we all understand that. I think that's everybody's reaction. But to me, what is much more, what was maybe more elusive is this idea that this is basically being done by design. Does anybody understand the significance of the fact that we have been bombarded for two months now with pictures of white people on their knees for blacks? I mean, isn't that lost on anybody? Because there are a lot of conservatives out there who will say, you know, I'm not going to kneel for the national anthem. It's not about the national anthem anymore. And, you know, Colin Kaepernick can kneel all he wants if he doesn't like the national anthem. I think it's offensive. I think he's an ingrate, just like a lot of his people. But that's not what's happening now. Now, you're seeing blacks and Black Lives Matter, and they're pointing the finger, and they're saying, you have to do what we tell you to do. And if that means signing a petition, or you're going to post a black box on Instagram, or you're going to give money to Black Lives Matter, or you're going to say Black Lives Matter, or you're going to get on your knees for us, white man. That's what it's become. So when it was black people taking a knee because they don't like the national anthem, I think it's disrespectful. I think it's outrageous. Why should they play football if they don't respect the country, if they don't respect the people and the land where they're making their hundreds of millions of dollars? So that's neither here nor there. It's different now. It's different. Because what's being demanded now is complete submission and humiliation. And it's racial. Not political. It's racial. It's liberals and cops and conservatives and everybody that has to take a knee for blacks now, for Black Lives Matter. And I don't know about you guys, but I am not really happy. I have no more patience left for seeing pictures of white people on their knees for blacks. I don't think white people should be on their knees for anybody, but certainly not for ungrateful minorities, or I should say non-whites in America. So I see that today, and to me, this is just one of the most harmful and destructive psychological operations that's, that is uh, being waged against whites and Americans and young people right now. Imagine being a young white person in America today with all this rhetoric that's going on. You know, imagine being a young 
teenager or, or even younger than that for that matter watching Nickelodeon and they're airing a commercial on Nickelodeon for eight minutes. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. George Floyd. On Nickelodeon, they're hosting like this racial awareness seminar with all these ridiculous black sociologists, you know, graduates or whatever, and then going on Twitter or going on Call of Duty Warzone and seeing Black Lives Matter messaging. What message does that send to our people? The message that is sent to non-whites in this country is Black is Beautiful, this Beyonce movie that just came out on Disney, Black is King, Black Lives Matter, you're the future, the future is you. And what's the message towards white people? Get on your knees, apologize, watch what you say, watch what you do, do this, post this, give us your money, sign your petition, write your name for us now. That's the message. So my message to white people is to rise up. Rise, white man, from your knees. Rise up. Even if you're not on your knees, it's time for us to rise up because our lives matter. White lives matter. We are kings. Well, we were actually kings and queens. White is king. And white is beautiful. I, that's my message to all the people watching this show. And it's not to say that anybody else is not exceptional or anybody else is uh, you know, not entitled to be proud of who they are, but it's simply to say that we as white people should be proud of who we are too. And we matter too. And we're great as well. And I think there are some unique things that we have a claim to greatness in as well. So I see that, and, and I'm realizing that we are just being browbeaten every day with visceral images and symbols of white people being taken down. Statues of white people, white politicians, white celebrities, white, white sports fans down on their knees. You know, down on their knees in their living room. Could you imagine that? Here, honey... Take a picture of me down on my knees for black people. <laughs> and it's funny, and by the way, you know, some people might watch this show and they say, Nick, that's a really cynical way of looking at it. If you don't agree fully with what I'm saying, you know, there are a lot of, like, people that have not taken the red pill yet, people that don't know the relevant facts yet who might say, you know, Nick, you don't understand, they're not taking the knee in submission to blacks, they're not taking the knee in submission to non-whites in this agenda, they're taking a knee in solidarity. And if you read some of the captions for these pictures, it says, I'm taking a knee for my black brothers and sisters. And if you think that, if you, th if you think that that's what's going on, I would invite you to just listen to what some of the prominent Black Lives Matter activists say about white people and to white people and the tone that they take with white people. Because... I can tell you, I have never, I have never felt that kind of welcoming. I have never, from Black Lives Matter, from any, any of them for that matter, this idea that we are the same, that we are brothers. Do you honestly, honest to God, do you believe that Black Lives Matter, militant blacks marching down the street, in some cases with firearms, do you think that they see you as their brother? You know, when they say, brother, what's up, brother, you think they're talking about you? You think they're talking about some pasty white guy who watches hockey and who is on his knees in his cargo shorts in his living room with his Funko Pops in the background? I don't think so. Nick Cannon said about white people that we are closer to animals. We're subhuman. We're all evil. Nick Cannon thinks we're his brothers. Nick Cannon looks at all these ridiculous white people down on their knees and says, Thank you, brother, for, for kneeling in solidarity. Do you think that that's what some of these Black Lives Matter think, these leaders think when they say exactly the same things? Local BLM leaders, you find them in Canada, the United States, all over the place. They say the same things. When they go on Instagram and say, I, it's not my job to educate you, you're the racist, wipe away your white tears, and then start being a better ally, you know, is that the tone of somebody who's, a friend, a brother, you know, somebody that has kinship with you? I don't think so. I mean, to this day, you still have a lot of white people and conservatives, too, that will delude themselves into thinking that all of these demonstrations are about solidarity and oneness and, and we're all in this together as opposed to what it is, which is anti-white hatred, anti-white grievance politics from and led by blacks. Well, 
from, and maybe blacks are used as the as the predominant pretext, right? But um, anyway, that's the NHL. So I, I know everybody can look at that and say, this is horrible, or this is stupid, or this is unjust or something. But, I mean, let me tell you what that's about. It is about them putting on the front page of Twitter.com the white man on their knees. And that is all by design. It is about humiliating. It is about demoralizing. It is about making us feel weak and small. But we're none of those things. So...